beautiful soul, have you ever wanted to speak to angels? Do you believe angels can support you in your daily life? If this is you, go to my website homepage, theangelmedium.com and sign up for my weekly angel message email. As a gift for signing up, I'm giving you access to free resources, including 31 healing meditations that, if you do daily, are going to help you hear your angels and your own intuition more clearly. Start using these today and you'll see changes in 31 days. Now, take a deep breath. Feel the presence of your angels as they fill you with love, joy, peace, bliss, and ease. And remember, your angels say the messages that resonate with you in today's episode are meant just for you. Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to the Angels and Awakening podcast. I'm your host and author, Julie Jancis. And friends, you are going to love, love, love today's guest. Her name is Rebecca Rosen. She is a medium for over 22 years, and you've probably seen her. She's been promoted um, by Oprah, Dr. Oz. She has several uh, best-selling books, and her newest book is What is Your Heaven? In today's talk, I know she's going to help you raise your vibration, raise your consciousness, feel more grateful for being here on earth. And her book is so worth having on your bookshelves. Um, Rebecca, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Yay. Um, okay. So in the beginning of your book, you start off and you're talking about um, how heaven to you is not a physical place, but you really believe that heaven is this beautiful vibration that we can get into and that everybody can be living their heaven here on earth right now. Talk to everybody about this. Yes. You know, this is such an important point because I hear it every single reading I do. And the bottom line is this, we have this misconception that when we die, we go to this place. And really what we're doing is just, it's everything's energy. Energy doesn't die. It changes form and we're changing to a different vibration. And so heaven is a feeling, okay? It's a state of being. And so just like when you're in this physical body, having a human experience, you can be in a living hell or you can be in creating a heaven on earth. And the whole idea is you don't need to wait until you cross over to find the feelings of heaven, of peace, of contentment, of relief, of freedom, of joy. Now, let's be real. We are in earth school and earth school requires homework. And so not every day you're going to be blissed out doing exactly what you want to be doing. But It really comes down to choosing how you perceive it or how you choose to feel about any given situation. Do you choose to see through a lens of love and peace and joy, or are you going to show up and look through a lens of fear and be in judgment and be in pessimism and negativity? And so that right there, if you're choosing the lens of fear, that's a living hell. Mm -hmm. Right. And so if you're choosing to show up and create your heaven, whatever your heaven is, everyone has a different idea. But as I said, what your heaven is, is more than the thing you're doing. It's a feeling in any given moment. So it's really a way of life and a way of being. Amazing. So your book goes through and it kind of talks about, um, that raising your vibration, raising your consciousness, really making this heaven on earth, isn't something that's like a mindset event where you can just change your thought immediately in a day and and have this shift. It's work that we have to do, right? Which is why we're here. Um, talk to us a little bit more about this work that we have to do to get to that point. Absolutely. So you know, the saying, it's not happening to you, it's happening for you. That, Mm -hmm. if you really believe that, that takes you out of victim and it puts you into a more empowered place. And it allows you, whatever struggle or hardship or challenge you're facing, you re-remember that 
oh, I signed up for this because there's lessons in it. And if you start to get curious about it and want to understand why do I keep repeating the same unhealthy habits or patterns over and over, then it takes you out of judgment of self, of shame, of blame of yourself or others. And so the bottom line is, is it puts you into the driver's seat of deciding on, are you going to do your homework? Now, Mm -hmm. You are here to learn these certain lessons or life assignments. It's either unfinished or unhealed karma that you brought in, okay, from past lives, um, whether it's just about yourself individually and or in relationship to others, or it's intergenerational homework that's been passed down to you from ancestors. Because in these family group, soul groups, family soul groups, we have lessons or patterns. So for instance, in my family, there's a lot of mental health, a lot of suicide. My grandmother died by suicide. My father took his life. And now it's been passed down. I was going through a point when this all began for me, when I was very down and in deep depression. And my grandmother said, I am here now as your spirit guide to help redeem my choices and help you make better choices here to find peace and relief and healing, which was bringing me my sense of heaven now versus Mm -hmm. having to wait until I cross over. And so I have been every day since I show up, I do my work. Okay. And that work again, um, when you feel the struggle and the challenge, it's real. I'm not discounting that. Um, And some of us have bigger struggles and challenges than others. It's all based on, again, our karma and what we chose to take on in any one lifetime, but you feel into it versus spiritually bypassing it. Right. Right. And we can't just love and light it away. We got to feel it. Then we find meaning in it. What's it here to teach me? And then we can heal it. Yeah. And And these lessons keep showing up until we do this. Well, and what's really fascinating is one of the things that you talk about is really almost like letting the emotions and the feelings lead you and guide you and that you can feel into what you want to be feeling. So you might be feeling low or down now, but you want to feel excited or happy or passionate or sexy or joyful. And so you can kind of identify what the feeling is that you want to feel and allow everything around you to shift, to bring you into that vibration instead of staying stagnant where you're at. Exactly. You know, I reference in my book, Dr. David Hawkins' Scale of Consciousness. He wrote Power Versus Force. And Mm -hmm. this book has every emotion from the bottom of the totem pole, which is victimhood and shame, to the top, which is enlightenment and love, and everything in between. And the goal is to at least get to neutrality, which is vibrating somewhere in the middle. Okay. And if you are feeling any of the lower negative emotions under that, it's okay. It's recognizing it, but choosing the next best feeling, you know, that you can get to. So you might not be able to go from A to Z. Okay. But you maybe find a little bit, if you're in deep grief, you find a little bit of hope. That's a step up in the right direction. And from there you get neutral and, Mm -hmm. and, once you're there, then it just naturally over time, it becomes a practice. The more you do it, the more you, you, you have the set point of your vibration. And if neutrality is the place you need to be, that's perfect too. And the way to get neutral is meditation. Mm-hmm. You know, it's really get out of your head and all the thoughts that are causing the suffering and really to stop, you know, being identified or defined by the thoughts, getting neutral so that you're in stillness. And from there, you can reach for the next best feeling. As I've gone through this work myself, my dad passed away and he started coming through to me before I even knew that he had passed. And as I have been stepping into my work as a healer, um, What I found was that spirit and our angels often teach through vibration, through us understanding what a 
feeling feels like or an emotion feels like. They bring through lessons through those emotions. So how do you work with your lessons and with your spirit team to really clarify and and get clear with them what it is that they're trying to show you when you're going through something bigger? Yeah, no, it's good. So I devoted a whole chapter, a lesson number three in my book is I am supported, I am surrounded. And it's all about remembering before you were born, you set up this loose blueprint or script of all the important lessons you're going to come in and learn and teach. But you also set up your team and spirit composed of your departed loved ones, your angels, your guides, your pets, you know, whatever that is to you. And they are there to assist you through these lessons. And so they, you know, through our clairs, they, you know, we have to use our clair senses. So we have to do the work to attune to and advance and, and grow our clairs. It's just like no different than working out and growing a muscle. And so it's about figuring out what works for you so that you can plug into this unseen realm. And, you know, prayer meditation is the, the entryway in. Because prayer is talking to spirit with an intention. I I call you in. I'm asking for your help. Please be with me. Help me through this struggle. Help me through this lesson. Help me learn it with grace, ease, and joy rather than pain and struggle, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's the entry point. But from there, you can develop your clairvoyance, your clairaudience so that you can more clearly see them, whether it's in your meditations or your dreams, or sometimes it's just seeing the signs in everyday life. But it's a skill and it's a practice and anybody can do this. We mm -hmm. all have the gift, so to speak, to different degrees. Okay. And it's really just suspending doubt and disbelief long enough to allow yourself to play with it and see and put it to the test. But I also think another big point is spirit says all the time, because of the law of free will, we have to give them permission to intervene. So it's like they're waiting in the wings for us to call them in, but th they're like a doctor on call. The minute you page them, they're there. And then they show up in a variety of ways, whether it's like you said, like a feeling or through, they use other people as messengers to say the right thing at the right time or mm -hmm. through signs like found objects or, you know, feathers or pennies or whatever it is, you know, they usually use all of these ways. And sometimes it's just through a knowing you have an aha moment. And that is spirit dropping that block of thought into your consciousness. Mm -hmm. Rebecca, you and I were talking about this before, and it was just the yummiest conversation. But my grandma has been showing me in, in dreams since she passed how many people on the other side or souls don't get to come through in this lifetime. And really how precious and sacred and special and meaningful this life is. But that gets lost for a lot of us, like in the day to day and as we're going along. Um, do you see that too from yes. the other side? Oh my gosh, yes. There is a line out the door of souls trying to get into a physical vessel to be born. And so it is such a gift. That's why, you know, I always remind myself, no matter what's going on, that be grateful that you are here and you have another day and don't take anything for granted because there are so many souls who only wish they had another chance to show up and work through their homework or their lesson.
And so, yeah, it's a very common thing. And, um, and so I always say also be grateful that you have struggle and challenges because it means you have homework, which means you still, you're still alive because if you didn't, you would be dead. Mm -hmm. Usually when we are done and we feel like we've completed it all, or maybe not all as much as we could do, then we exit, Mm -hmm. right? But the whole point is there's a way to do this without struggle and pain. We can be in earth school, learn our lessons with grace and joy and ease and flow. Okay. And that really comes down to what we were saying earlier. What are you going to choose in terms of how do you want to feel? What, what's your perception? What lens are you going to see this through the lens of love, faith, and trust or through fear? And that is our gift of free will and free choice. Amazing. Um, I love your book and I love how you talk about how we can all build that heaven for ourselves here because that heaven is different for everybody. Uh, I'm like you though. I'm a beach person. My heaven is right on the beach and hearing the seagulls and the waves and just like the smell of sea salt. Um, How do other people build that heaven into their lives here and now? Yeah, that's a really good question because for some of us, it's just physically impossible. Like I live in Denver. I can't be at the ocean, my happy place every day. Mm -hmm. But what I have found is that I make it a point to get there as much as I can. And then when I can't be there, I close my eyes and I turn on my meditation music that has ocean waves. And I really visualize myself back in my happy place. And it brings back the same feelings that I get in my heaven being at the beach. So everybody, you know, I've had spirits come through saying their heavens being in Las Vegas. Um, For me, that's like a nightmare living hell, but everyone's different. And, you know, so, you know, every spirit shares their heaven is a a different visual. You know, maybe it's hanging out with girlfriends, having good laughs, or it's going shopping and, you know, on Madison Avenue, whatever it is, it's whatever brings you joy and there is no judgment. So if you know one of your favorite things to do is to go shopping, okay, it just makes you feel good. Go shopping more. If it's to go work out or go hiking, get out into nature, go do that more. Okay. And figuring out how you can bring your heaven to earth on a daily basis and doing it the best you can. And again, sometimes if you can't literally do it, just meditating on the feeling that that activity brings you will help to raise your vibration to those heavenly feelings. I love it. I love it. Um, So you and I have this beautiful job and work in this life of getting to do sessions for people and bring through their loved ones. And in this work, we often are talking to people about some of the deepest emotions that they've ever felt, the most challenging times, the best times that they've had. And it's a very unique perspective in this life. And I want you to talk about your first book too, or your book before this, um, because you put together all of these lessons that you learned from doing this work and how we can live a better life here. Can you talk to us a little bit about that too? Yes. So my, my last book, what the dead have taught me about living well, it's like a day in my life and it's all the important lessons I've learned and sometimes the hard way. Um, but I've learned and what I've learned from spirit, these seven fundamental lessons that I included in this book, um, are really universal lessons. And like, for instance, the lesson that I am supported, I am surrounded. It's remembering that we all have a team spirit. We are not meant to do this earth school alone and struggle through. We have a team of the most amazing coaches and guides and therapists and counselors and maternal figures and whatever you want to call it that are there to help you through it. So it's re-remembering that you're not alone. Okay. Um, The lesson I am, I am learning from others. And then there's a lesson I am teaching others. Well, this is all about soul groups and that we travel in soul groups with certain souls that we keep reincarnating with over and over 
to either learn or teach certain lessons with. We're just playing out roles that we agreed to, that we asked each other to play. So even if your your greatest enemy, you know, who 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 triggers you all the time could be a really close soulmate to you that is just wearing that mask in this lifetime to help you learn your lesson so that you can respond versus react and get it right this time. Okay. And sometimes the tables have turned where in one lifetime, you were the enemy. And in this lifetime, you're on the other side of the receiving end. And so all these lessons, and one of the other lessons that I am, I wrote in was I am worthy because worthiness seems like such an obvious natural thing, but it's not mm-hmm. there. I mean, so many people I work with, they don't feel worthy and their challenges and struggles really boil down to not feeling worthy and deserving of having or receiving or being whatever it is. And they make their life harder because it's in a sense, they're, they're suffering. They're going without, they're not, they're not experiencing those feelings that we're supposed to, which are, you know, love, self-love, self-worth. Yes, a hundred percent. Well, and when you think about it, you've got all these souls lined up on the other side to come into this lifetime. The fact that we're just here and we're able to live this life to me is proof that we're worthy of being here. That is such a great point. Yes. Um, What an opportunity that we get to show up, that we get to wake up each day, whatever's on our plate. You know, my dad used to say, just remember this too shall pass, whether Mm -hmm. it's, you know, something positive or negative. It's really just remembering that everything is temporary. So just be grateful and try and find the gifts in all of it. Yeah. Well, and going back to your point before, when it comes to life, we're constantly swimming in multiple different systems at the same time and everything gets so busy. Like I wake up in the morning and, you know, spend quiet time, but then I have to get my daughter ready for school and then check all the emails. And um, it gets very, very busy, very fast. And we're feeling all of these different things as we move through our days. But what I really love about your work is if you really bring it back to vibration, what am I feeling? What is the lesson that spirit is trying to get me to understand? Where am I at in life school? Um, What do I want to be feeling? What is my heaven? It's almost like shifting gears on a car. It's like you can move through life in such a different experience of life. Maybe even with a different car when you're when you're experiencing it through the vibrations themselves instead of maybe what we're seeing or what's happening around us in the moment. Right. It's real easy to get caught up in illusion and delusion of this earth world. And that's where we lose ourselves. And that's why coming back to your center and, and your soul, you know, it's, it's coming back to your divinity. Mm -hmm. And so that you can gain a clear perspective and not get caught up in all of the frenetic fragmented energy that exists around us in this earth experience. Um, And so it really is about vibration and attuning your vibration to the frequency of light. Okay. And we can also, unfortunately, I think what trips most of us up is we, we can make choices out of the frequency of shadow. And Mm -hmm. that is our, our wounds or our unhealed parts of ourselves. And we all have it, but that's in this book is really about how do we heal our unfinished business, our karma, those wounds and shadows so that we can be more neutral or, you know, better yet be in a heavenly state as much as possible. And so that comes back to you doing the work and changing the false beliefs, you know, whatever those false beliefs are and really affirming what it is you want to feel or how you want to be. And then integrating those affirmations into your being. 
There are so many people too. So doing this work, I call them threads of commonality. Like you see these threads of commonality between different people. And there are so many people who have almost this PTD, PSD, TD like energy when it comes to making those big changes in their life and they fear regression like going back to their old way mm -hmm. um I see that with people who are trying to work on those karmic lessons in life too how do you teach people to make it stick where that it, they're not going to regress like that spirit really wants you to make these huge changes and not go backwards but keep going forwards yes i love that yeah it i have a program in my book and it's change it run it tap it but what what it's saying is this you ha you have to change the false beliefs or whatever it is the struggle and you've got to flip it you know, to whatever. So I am not worthy. You flip it to, I am worthy. Mm -hmm. I am deserving. Um, you know, I am enough. Okay. Whatever that is, you've got to flip it to the positive. And then what spirit has shown me is running your energy every day. So you change the false belief to the affirmative, make your affirmation in the positive, and then you run energy, which is what my energy healer and I have been doing for the last four or five years. And it's all about um, affirmations alone aren't enough. Okay. Mm -hmm. You've got to integrate it. And so what I found is for me, integrating it by visualizing certain colors that vibrate at certain frequencies. Okay. So Royal blue is deprogramming. So if I'm trying to deprogram the false belief, I'm not worthy. I will meditate on, I am worthy and deserving. And I imagine Royal blue waterfalls flooding my body. Okay. Then at the same time, I incorporated tapping or mm -hmm. the emotional freedom technique, which is really resetting your nervous system and integrating the, the affirmations into your being. But then after, okay, so it's, it, it's a five minute process you can do and it, the book outlines what it is, but the point being you have to be consistent. Then that, that is your homework every day for five minutes a day, hour a day, whatever you choose doing that so that it does stick. Okay. Because if you over 20 years created these false beliefs, you're not going to undo it overnight. Mm -hmm. It takes practice, but a hundred percent, you can reprogram, you can recalibrate, you can reset. And, and with the help of your team and spirit and asking for divine guidance, divine intervention, along with your own being proactive and doing it, you won't, you'll eventually transcend the struggle yeah. and it will no longer be. That's the whole point. Yeah. That's incredible. That's incredible. Um, cause I don't know if it was this one or when we were talking before, but you had been talking about, there's really big struggles within your family, right? Like your grandma mm -hmm. had some stuff, your dad had some stuff. And there are often times where spirit will come in to a person and say, listen, we know that you've been through a lot or your family's been through a lot, but it's not meant to continue through your life path. And we have to change that mindset within you so that you see that your life plan is different here. Exactly. A lot of times our homework to do is healing transgenerational or intergenerational karma. That is it's spiritual hand-me-downs. It's been mm -hmm. passed down through our, our bloodline. And this is us. Like for me, it was mental health issues. My grandmother died by suicide. You know, she, she didn't get the help she needed. My father took his life. And then here I was 20, five years ago, going through a deep depression. And my grandma came to me in spirit. That was how I realized I had this gift. And she said, I'm going to help you learn how to love yourself from the inside out, find your worth and heal the depression, feel this, heal this family line. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in my family, you would go within, you go into your shell. My dad's name was Shelly. And we always said, he's going into a shell. And that was not letting people in and not reaching out for the help we needed. Mm -hmm. And I had that pattern as well until I realized, wait, not only do I need to ask for professional help and my family support, but I need to ask for spirits help. And yeah. once I did that in my first book, spirited is the whole memoir on how this happened. 
and how I was able to, for 18 months, I had a mind, body, spirit program that my angel and my deceased grandmother gave me to do. And they said, do this. And I did it and it worked. And so I want to share that with everyone else who might be struggling to know that there's hope and that you can not only heal yourself, but heal generations behind you and forward. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. That's so powerful. Okay. So I wanted to ask you this too. Um, you got so many cool stories about, you know, loved ones coming through. What's one of your favorites uh, or a couple of your favorites of just the coolest aha moments or validation or those biggest moments where you just know, like, you know, like, you know, wow. Um, I have so many and they're usually the ones involving children, um, mainly because I, in my personal experience, I think there's no greater loss um, or lesson to go through than losing a child. Yeah. You know, it's just uh, heart wrenching. Um, and so, you know, there was a woman I in Chicago. Actually, I, I travel and I do groups, and I had a woman drag her husband to the group. And I, in the group, I said, "I'm getting a young man who died," and. I'm getting that he had mental like health issues or he was handicapped and he recently died and I'm getting the name like Joe or, or John. And this woman's like, that's our son. His name is Josh. And so I go over and I start reading both of them. And I I looked at the dad and I said, you feel guilty. Like you should have saved him. And I guess he was mentally like um, disabled. He was handicapped. And the dad is the one who found him. He was having like a seizure and he died. And the dad felt so much guilt. He thought he was supposed to save his son. But the son came through and said, dad, no, it was my time to go. And you were there to hold space for me. And nobody failed me. Okay. And in fact, he explained how he signed up. Remember I talked about the line out the door to come in? Well, there's a line out the door for souls to come in who are challenged in some way. Because it gives the living loved ones great opportunities to learn their lessons. So he was explaining, he's an earth angel, this Josh. He came in to teach his family members around him about how to show up and take care of him. He was 24 years old. And the and the kicker was, I said, he loves the shoes. Did you bury him in shoes? And the dad was, he went from total skeptic to total believer. It's like, oh my God. He's like, the, the day before he died, we bought him a brand new pair of like Nike Airs or Jordans or something. And he said he never got to wear them. So we buried him in his shoes. He's like, he uh. knew? I'm like, yes, he knew. And he's saying to you, like, it's all good. He's at peace. He, he came in for 24 short years as an earth angel to help you. And now he's freeing you of guilt and, and thanking you for how you showed up for him, but also learned your lessons. Wow. Very powerful when you reframe it and look at it as like, this was all supposed to happen. Yeah. Amazing. Rebecca, your new book, What's Your Heaven is a must have for your bookshelves. Tell everywhere where they can find, tell everyone where they can find it and you. Yes. My website is RebeccaRosen.com. Um, and you can find the book just about anywhere, any bookseller, Barnes and Noble, Amazon.com. But on my website is a link for all the outlets. They can purchase the book. Awesome. And we'll put those in the show notes below as well. Thank, Thank you, you so much for your time today for being here. Thank you. This was, I feel like I'm right at home. So thank yes. you. This has been wonderful. Oh. Of course, that makes me so happy. Thank you, friends, for being here. Have a blessed, blessed day. Beautiful soul, thank you so much for joining me today. My name's Julie. You know I'm all about connecting you with messages from your angels and loved ones on the other side. If you've been listening today and you're super excited and just have to know which angels are around you right now, who's connecting with you, and what messages they have for you, go to theangelmedium.com. Register for a session. You can do a reading with me or a member of my team, and we can help you in making sure that your angels are doing the very best they can to support you and guide you to your best life. 
If this sounds like you, virtual sessions, they're only offered on my website. Sign up today. And if you're the person who's really excited, you can sign up for my Angel Reiki School to become a certified angel messenger. That's for the healers among us who feel called to grow their intuition to the max and serve humanity with their gifts. You'll learn Reiki, mediumship, how to deliver angel messages, and how to get clients. That's the Angel Reiki School at theangelmedium.com or DM me on Instagram at Angel Podcast with any questions. Before you go, connect with your angels by placing your hands on your heart. Take a deep breath. Imagine a doorway filled with God's unconditional love is right in front of you. Step into that love and feel it as it fills your body, chakras, and auric field. Now ask your angels, what would you have me know today? And open yourself to the positive, loving messages they have just for you. <laughs> 